Oh, you know that bracelet that you posted in the Happy Body Tribe? Oh yeah. Right. Do, do you do you sell those? No, but I can if somebody helps me. What does that mean? Somebody helps you? Well, I don't have time to organize the whole thing, so somebody has to ship them and order them and so on, right? So, you know, I cannot do everything. You want to make money, you know, then you tell me that you will be brace bracelet person and then you will be doing this and fine. We'll become billionaires. <laughs> awesome. All right, so uh, hi everyone, day six. And um, well, I think that you are really getting some information about the virtues and, and the, the differences between the fatalist and the, the master come slowly into the experience. Uh, the experience is the most important factor. So, um, Knowing about this is okay, but you probably know that knowing about uh, fatalism and the master is just uh, entertainment a little bit. The knowledge is okay and uh, insights are great, but the experience comes from reading, the experience comes from you know, uh, entering the energy of the, uh, of the fatalism and the master so we have integrated that and when we hear something it becomes organic and then we know who is talking so we penetrate the, the language of the fatalist and the master organically so we are not approaching this consciously so consciously uh, when we approach something consciously we can always make mistakes but our feeling will never make a mistake so that's his uh, experience is more important. Our reading is more important than when we talk about. The talk about is good. It creates some kind of, a, a, I would say, um, a motivation to expand and, and to search and to experience. And through the talk, sometimes we experience as well. But the... Uh, the things that I have written on with the purpose on us, like poems and stories and dialogues, they have this power to get us right away into that feeling and experience, uh, whether the experience of the fatalist or the master or you know the whole rainbow of the language between. So uh, if there is anybody that would like to address our reading, about the essential strength. Uh, so please do now. Uh, if not, we move to the creating a garden. Jersey, I have a question. Okay. Um, an observation. And I don't mean it as in any, any sense uh, offensive, especially to you, but Yesterday, when you were talking about the, um, the book reviews and the, the, uh, the way that people were uh, looking at the books and talking about them in the reviews, and it seemed to me that when you responded, it was coming more from a fatalist point of view than a master point of view. And it... Could you comment on that, or do you have any feeling about that either way? When it, you almost seem kind of angry about it, and and it just wasn't um, wasn't you. And I just uh, it's more about the uh, impossibility. Well, it is really impossible in this way. It's not the fatal. It's because it's really true that you cannot really um, uh, cut you know, uh, a piece of poetry or a piece of story and, and, and take only 25% and, and succeed with it. You can succeed, see, succeed with, uh, with a nature of the um, information only. If there is something about information that you could do that, 
and uh, you can take maybe you know the even non-fiction books because non-fiction books uh, are around passing certain information and let's say like a uh, thinking doing god uh, it's a it's a book about uh, that we think and thinking and doing there is a gap between and sometimes what we think uh, we don't do or we we are doing certain things and will not do because our thinking is in the way so if we are used to certain habits then uh, our, our thinking will not lead us to the doing because we are um, we are stuck with the habit so in that in the, the book there is a example of the of the canadian canadian uh, company i think that it's used to uh, uh, to have certain way of, of uh, doing business and there is this uh, young person comes in and and uh, uh, that person analyzes something and finds out that the company could actually do better if the company would uh, adjust to certain things and one of the things is that executives would get a new car every uh, two years instead of a year so uh, when he uh, said that to uh, to other people they said forget about it. then he went to the boss and and told the boss that this could be a solution for improvement the boss said forget about it. that's <laughs> forget about it, right so emotional impact was so uh devastating that the emotional impact would actually uh, decide about how uh, how the company is going to go, even though company can get worse, uh, the company will not adjust to something what is logical, what the master would say, right? So um, the book goes through uh, examples and, and stories like uh, similar stories, how emotional, emotionally, emotional unintelligence creates or emotional um, the fatalist, right, an expression of it can create the situations in a company. The company can really get worse, and and people are okay with it. They will not adjust to the to the doing what's right. So there is a book written, the whole book about to experience that, right? To experience such a thing as uh, as an, an integrate the thinking doing God. Well, you know, I could say that I can read the title and I know already what's in the book, right? So I feel it. If it's true, then I wouldn't need to read the book, right? But how many people could be like that, right? So there are um, there is a reason why that book is written to integrate our experience into it so we could uh, in our mind align ourselves with, with, with the with the hard choice and what to do actually in order to um to do what what is right in in this situation what is right is really um write the book expose the book and uh, not to uh, create such a thing as a brief description of the book. So when we uh, create brief description of the book, that sounds like uh, somebody wants to make just to make money and somebody uh, cuts on experience and approaches everything from the mental point of view. So um, that can be done with like I said, information, but is that the delivery of, of the experience of a person that actually, after reading the book, thinking, doing that, is capable actually to, um, to do in his life uh, the, the, in the doing the right thing. So that can surrender to that emotions that uh, 
their impulses and is able to override those wrongdoing when the person hears well if we have a new car every two years it can uh, help the company in this and that so the master would say right away really yeah so da, 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 da. okay let's do it right so that is a a, a normal response abnormal response here in this situation what is good right on the good side abnormal would be to say that uh, such a thing as uh, as uh, cannot happen because people are used to that there is a developed habit and the habit of the fatalist is more important it's more important to go on like that even though the family crashes the the company crashes so the there is an another uh, parallel to psychology and writing brief psychology books and yeah i talk a lot about with psychologists especially those that uh, deal with really, really hard cases and they well they simply laugh at that uh, at that brief psychology even though brief psychology uh, is created right and some psychologists do that but from the point of the psychologists that really really do the work and deliver they really know that you you need five years you need ten years and then brief psychology is just a mental approach and really uh, doesn't do much really and uh, the only what it does it creates the, uh, the the situation where people who do that they become rich but people who actually uh, are exposed to that they cannot really benefit from it because it's just too shallow and uh, based is only it's like stoicism versus you know knowing about stoics yeah you can you could take uh, uh, Seneca's letter and, and brief them right instead of reading the whole passage you would have half of the um, uh, half of the sentence or, or or one sentence and you would say it's enough right it's like uh, we don't need the rest so we can take out of context you know and then when we do it we simply rape the the whole uh, uh the whole story and the whole experience we just rape it and that is uh i i think that is the right uh word here so when we take a piece of uh, literature like uh you know dialogues or poems or, or short story and uh, and we take, you know, we uh, take 25% of it. We just raped it because that's that. It's not going to deliver anything because it's that it becomes too shallow. Those writers who created the writing here and were able to actually uh, pass on, they spent time to, to make it happen. And they know that you cannot deliver in a 25% volume of the content. If you do that, that you would need to write something else, but not really this. So the whole thing, uh, uh, you know, the, the review that, you know, claims such a thing is of course the review, uh, somebody that really doesn't know all those things, right? So my uh, thing to you guys was about, because now you're a little bit more know about how important it is the wholeness and that's is to you now to really talk to that person because the person needs help in a way to uh, to see all of it so um that is that is that is your purpose there your purpose is not really to save the uh, the book or whatever but your purpose is to to talk to the person from your own perspective that your own perspective is that every word in that dialogue is necessary and why is it necessary and that's what you know i was asking you to do yeah yeah thanks um 
Yeah, it, when I, I think a few of us have gone through this um, when we first discovered the happy body and ordered the book and, um, and it, it almost seemed overwhelming to, and I, and I know that's a big, uh, not probably the right word, but anyway, and, but it's, it's through getting to know you over these four or five weeks that it, um, you know, it's really hit home and, and, you know, where, where we're far, far more committed, I believe, for the most part than, than we are just by reading a book. So I guess what you're saying is we just need to get, go out there and multiply and, and believe what we believe, right? Well, n not only is that, you know, I'm bringing you closer to the piece of literature and expanding the imagination, expanding your imagination so you can receive it, right? Because it's, it's really hard to receive what I wrote and, or it's hard to receive poetry. You know, uh, not all poets get other poets, right? Other people forget about, it, right? So, you know, even to, uh, to uh, bring you close to the poems so you could receive the poem, it, it's a craft by itself because it's opening in, in, in the regular people like you are that, you know, you don't read poetry, you don't even uh, have the idea how to receive, not the idea, but you don't have experience of receiving the poem, right? So that has to be open to you. You know, here is dialogues, right? Those dialogues are fast in a way. It's really hard to uh, feel what's going on up there in, inside this writing. Uh, you would need to be very sensitive writer to really sense it, right? That's why, uh, you know, to talk about this like we talk and expand more, bring you closer to possibility to experience the piece of literature which are uh, here dialogues, it, it is, uh, of course, it's easier to get Shakespeare because it's expanded more and, uh, and the story is very clear uh, w what is wrong, what is not, and who is and who is not. And somehow we feel it uh, easier, uh, that piece of literature, right? But uh, dialogue or poems are really uh, hard to receive we can understand them, but understanding is not a poetry. So uh, the receiving the piece of art is poetry. It's like music. And uh, you know, to know music doesn't mean that you receive music. Receive music is really when you, when something happens with you, when the composer wrote a piece of music with certain story, when that story comes in a life in you, that's when you receive it. And that receiving is uh, extremely difficult to do because it's another craft. It's like uh, you would become a medical doctor here and you becoming here a receiver of arts. It is, uh, uh, you know, this people really love, you know, arts. And then sometimes they walk around, you know, paintings and uh, in museums and, and I watch how they do, how they walk and stand a little bit, move on and so on. It, it doesn't look like they receive anything, but when we take, let's say some uh, paintings like Van Gogh's uh, Potato Eaters. Wow, this, this painting gives me goosebumps even when I think about that, right? It gives me the family, integrity of the family, gives me poverty and, and integrity of these people who uh, face, you know, the, the fate and the poverty with gracefulness. And that, that gives me everything, right? It gives me the bottom of the, of the uh, gracefulness of people with integrity and poverty at the same time. You cannot find almost anywhere better you know way of showing it and a lot of uh, a lot of movies show that uh, too and a lot of you know movies about uh, african-americans you know 
in the 30s and 20s, how they live life. It's a high integrity living life. How integrity and facing poverty and, you know, uh, you know uh, racism at the same time, right? So it's beautiful, it's graceful, and it's really, um, you know, this piece of art to receive that way, uh, you have to somehow have virtues in you uh, uh, to, to receive that. That it's never been received at that time when, you know, Van Gogh painted that. But he painted that with these feelings. And those feelings, he saw the family. He saw the wonderful gift of that family, that, that gift that family has between themselves. He didn't show hardship. He showed the love of people in that family and gracefulness. And if you receive that, it's amazing. It's so powerful, it's so beautiful. And that's Van Gogh's potato eaters. You can stand in front of it for hours when you receive this. And that receiving, you know, has to be open. And, you know, we were fortunate that, you know, people open this receiving in poetry for us. Other poets opened that, you know, to me. And I received and, you know, I was able to uh, receive the, uh, those feelings that come from, from the poem, not just to read but I was able to pass the words and receive. And I'm aware of that, that, you know, the book of poetry or the dialogues, the dialogues are easier to receive, but the book of poetry, like, uh, you know, the, the food for your soul are really hard to receive. And that's why I will be, you know, uh, working with the poems as uh, I would take one week and I will go over and I will expose you poems, um, poem a day. And then, you know, we'll, we'll uh, open in you the, the, the feelings that you can get from this poem, but not really just know it. So, where, where, where I'm coming from and then where uh, you know, maybe it was too early for you guys to, uh, to ask you for such a thing, right? But um, I think that you are slowly receiving the, um, the whole, um, the, the feelings, you can start feeling, I think that the master and the painter is, I don't know if you are feeling it or you know about this, but the knowing is the, uh, one thing uh, to go through, right? First, we have to know, be aware, and uh, know yourself, right? This is the you know, Aristotle, and then then you move on, and, and and you become Socrates and examine your life, right? That you start really digging in. What is our life about, and what is the virtue, and why we are here, and and then and what is uh, the most meaningful in our life? We're asking really big questions here, and this uh, this uh, this course is 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 about that. And then and you know I I was faced with the question of the happy body and people, and which the people can do the happy body and they the happy they they somehow like it, they cannot receive the uh, the happy body. It's like I, I was looking and I was just thinking, it's such a goodness and they cannot receive it. What's, what's wrong with that, right? So just the same with a poem. And I understood that the happy body is like a poem. And, and I started, uh, I started uh, uh, calling my clients my little poems, right? So they just go through the same process as... Uh, as you know, as a poem, right? It's like a, a poem uh, begins somewhere and, and it evolves within the poet and takes 
days and years sometimes, you know, to finish a poem. I have a poem, Sparrow, it took me uh, half a year to write, but it's only 10 lines, okay? But what goes on in the poem, I couldn't open in my uh, mind the shift that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I meditated on that poem every day. And I was going to that place where I was stuck. And, and I kept doing that. And one day I was in Marina del Rey and, and you know, I was uh, meditating and just boom, like this. And I came out from the room and I told Vanilla, I got it, I got it. Then I went to Vermont and I uh, read this poem and Richard Jackson asked me, how did you do that? How, how did you do that? And I said, you know, I meditated and meditated and one day it was an amazing movie. I've never seen this like this. Okay, I will read you the poem then. Uh, let me find out the sparrows. So. So if I could just say thank you and you are, Jersey, you're so much more than what, what people expect. And and I I understand you I understand your vision more and more and uh, and the commitment that you have and that you expect that we would have as well. So thank you very much for that. It's um, very cool. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, it's like a poem, right? <laughs> Let me find the poem. <laughs> So well, Jack, very well said and very brave. Yeah, thanks very much. I, it just, wow, just blows my mind. <laughs> so uh, you are my, you know, little poems, right? So uh, everyone, you know, of you goes through um, this process of becoming a one thing better but also you know good human being that is uh, that is important to become to be the part of society right so we care for these things and and you know and becoming that human is uh, is essential in our life Okay, the poem. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines. Wow, I was right on. <laughs> Didn't know even it was ten lines. Sparrows. At dinner, I asked my mother, are you afraid of death? Slowly, she raised her hand and touched the white curtain. Her cheeks flattened. No, she said, but I will miss the sparrows. The leafless trees were covered with snow. I didn't see any sparrows. Only my wife's white hands braiding her hair before supper. All right, again. Sparrows. At dinner, I asked my mother, are you afraid of death? Slowly, she raised her hand and touched the white curtain. Her cheeks flattened. No, she said, but I will miss the sparrows. The leafless trees were covered with snow. I didn't see any sparrows, only my wife's white hands braiding her hair before supper. Well, tell me where I was stuck. Tell you where, where I was stuck in the poem. 
stuck. Stuck. Okay. So it took me half a year to finish the poem. So the part of the poem I wrote and I couldn't finish. Tell me why and where. Seeing only your wife's white hands. What is it? Seeing only your wife's white hands braiding her hair. Right. And why? Because it was, it was different than the conversation you started. What, what is the, you know, what is the pearl here? White hands with what? Snow and white hair? No, no, white hands and what? What is the other white. word in the poem that... The white curtain. The, the white curtain. With what? The white curtain. Yeah, the curtain. No. It was white. Um. White hands and what? White hair? Your mother's cheek. No. <laughs> See how difficult it is? Yeah. <laughs> Does right. it have to do with the sparrow? Sparrows. All right. The sparrows. What what is sparrows for my mother was my my wife's hands. Now I will read it to you again. At dinner I asked my mother, Are you afraid of death? Slowly she raised her hand and touched the white curtain. Her cheeks flattened. No, she said, but I will miss the sparrows. The leafless trees were covered with snow. I didn't see any sparrows, only my wife's white hands braiding her hair before supper. She, she was going, she was remembering what she loved to see which were the sparrows, even though there weren't any there then? Right, but sparrows she would miss the most. Yeah, it, it's, like a par it's like a parallel, right? So your, yeah. mom, your mother would miss the sparrows the most. And so why you got stuck here to think? About what you would miss the most. Yeah, and I didn't think. You see, I, I was feeling over and over, and I couldn't arrive to the image what would be smart sparrows for me i couldn't yeah. open them and you found when i sparrows. opened that when i saw it finally it took me half a year to see that and one Jersey, more time so you would miss your what your wife's what hands was, yes what was sparrows for my mother my mother you know, she was not afraid of that. She was not afraid of, uh, you know, uh, anything, but she would miss the sparrows. The sparrows were something for her eternal, something, you know, beautiful, something, you know, uh, more than, than fear of death. Beautiful, right? Think about that. At dinner, I asked my mother, are you afraid of death? Slowly she raised her hand and touched the white curtain. Her cheeks flattened. No, she said, but I will miss the sparrow. The leafless trees were covered with snow. I didn't see any sparrows. So I'm looking now through the window, right? The leafless trees were covered with snow. I didn't see any sparrows. Only my wife's white hands braiding her hair before supper. Your mother was thinking of a memory and you were capturing a moment. Is that close? Well, the sparrows for my mother is my my wife's hands. Did your mother pass away in the interim? 
Hmm? Was it your mom that passed away and the sparrows were gone? Is when the, the poem was written? Yeah. When the poem was written, my, my mother was alive. Oh, okay. So can I ask the the white hands are the metaphor? Yes. The sparrows are the metaphor of the white hands, but it's for me the feeling in the poem isn't it's it's the, the tenderness of the connection. So that even the sparrows and the hands, to me when I heard it, what touched me, these are metaphors, representations, but actually it's the the tenderness and the caring of the act of braiding someone's hair for them that really struck me so it's it's all these things but yeah, it's beautiful what you said because you know the poem works for you you know to receive something you 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 receive love you you receive tenderness right you know you, you receive you know the the care right here and then you know you and you entered the poem from that perspective which is really good it's a beautiful image. Yeah. Jersey, what, what struck me was that uh, Anyana is extraordinarily lucky. She's, you know, because the thing for your mother is the sparrows, and that's the thing that she would miss beyond death. And if you're saying that it's your wife's hands, then that, that's, that's amazing. But you see, the, the thing here is that, you know, when when I entered the poem and I was writing this poem and when my mother said I will miss the sparrows and I and she was standing and looking through the window, I looked through the window and it was only darkness for a long period of time. I couldn't see anything there. So I had to match my mother's love of sparrows as something that she would miss, you know, uh, when she is not here anymore. I would need to match that with something in my life. So I, I had to arrive somewhere at the image that would equal the sparrows. Otherwise, I would never really get there. But to really get to, to this hands. It took me half a year of meditation. Why? Because I had to grow up to that. I have to somehow acknowledge that in me and find it. That's why this poem, uh, it took so much attention of others. Uh, other poets or oh, was uh, published by Tennessee University Press and it was you know Richard Jackson really loved the poem and and many poets really love this poem because it has such a such a tenderness but uh, we just said it's such a love of uh, of the mother and 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 dealing with the death and dealing with the, you know, such an innocent thing like sparrows. And then the poet goes through it and then has to find the equal, equal thing in his life. That's the poem could only work that way. Guys, you took me on the road today. And it was Dick's fault. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we didn't do anything, right? Thanks, Dick. <laughs> you, you brought your love, your big love, I did. to us. <laughs> you brought it to us. And you, you have experienced big love in the women with the with women and probably many others with the with your mother and your wife and your daughter you're lucky you have and you know i don't know it's a 
pretty important, meaningful thing that has happened to you, this love that you got and you experienced. It's quite, it's quite an interesting, uh, you know, uh, I think about the luck and the um, and work we do in life and, and, you know, somehow, yeah, we are lucky and then we, you know, work hard and, and we are lucky and we work hard and we are not lucky and then we work hard and, and all of it somehow, you know, uh, moves on in our life. And I was lucky, I was lucky to uh, be uh, in time and meet people that they were, wow, they were, you know, the light of the planet. And, and I, that's, that's where I was extremely lucky. And then, you know, when I lost some of that light, I became searching for it. I became crazy searching for it, you know, to, to find it back. Because when I, when I was alone, when I started immigration system, uh, that full on, I lost Jersey's light. And it was very clear for me that I, I, I just didn't have it. I had some, but didn't have, you know, uh, what I experienced. I didn't have it in me. I started searching for it and ended up with a lot of mentors and ended up with a lot of mentors because I was, I was exposed to Papyrushka. If I was not exposed, I would never search for it. I, I searched for that light all my life. And that poem is, 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 uh, uh, what is, is on the journey of finding it, right? Uh, it was 96 when, when I wrote the poem. I remember exactly where I was. See, when you do certain things that they are so meaningful, so powerful, you know exactly the day where it happened. That's how, how uh, visceral the whole thing is, how poignant the whole thing is. That you, you can never forget about. Yeah. Well, that's poetry, you see. You know, poetry is, is very dense and, and, and very extremely meaningful and, and it's, it, it's hard to pen penetrate you know, the piece of art that way. It's like hard to penetrate potato eaters even though uh, it's, it's on the surface, right? Potato eaters are really hard to penetrate because you would need to uh, you need to have find in yourself that being poor um, is 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 not really a big thing, but but see the love of poor people and the gracefulness how they go through life that is a big thing, and you would need to arrive there, you need to get there, and you cannot get there. You cannot get potato eaters. Well, education of arts is to, you know, like uh, help us, right? And can help us. Uh, other people who love arts, you know, they become teachers and they become, you know, people who bring closer us to, uh, to pieces of art. And they talk about, expose that more Bring closer. Have you read that poet society? Or so the movie. Because it was uh, actually Tom Showman. He wrote that poet society. I think I was. You know, he was my client at that time when he was writing. That wonderful human being. Wow. And we have a dead poet society, right? You mean the movie with um, Robin Williams? Yes, yeah. Yeah, fabulous Tom, movie. Tom was my, was my client during this time. Tom Schumann, who, who wrote that, that poem. He wrote the, the film? 
Yes. Was it a book first? No, it was a script. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a fabulous film. I love it. Yeah, it was wonderful. People really loved Ray from the beginning. And um, a lot of uh, um, you know, different companies, uh, producers, you know, tried to make that movie. It was pretty right away, uh, the script that was loved by people. You know, Jersey, I, uh, I've been asked during the lockdown, what are you doing with your time? And, and, and I've replied that, I, that, that I've struck gold. Uh, I, I discovered you. <laughs> um, but, but you're a tough guy to describe because the happy body and 18 exercises, et cetera, doesn't, doesn't scratch the surface of, 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 of all that you bring. So I, I just want to say thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you know, you know, I, I found out with the happy body, the same, the same situation, the same problem. It's like uh, that poet poem that is really uh, hard to receive and, the more I talk about the happy body, the more I know it, really. And the more I see it, eh, you know, what is it for people, right? And what, what it gives and, and why is it so hard to, uh, to receive, like a poem? And why is it so meaningful and so important to actually get it and fight for it? And, you know, that's why I, I wrote all these dialogues. That's why I wrote poems. And you are probably slowly getting it. All of it was written because people, it was really hard for people to receive the happy body. The whole philosophy was created because of, of these difficulties to, to become the happy body, to become goodness. It's really hard for us to become goodness. It's always a hard choice. All right, guys, I will give you some time. So I will go and get myself uh, tea. It was wonderful. Well, good day today. Dick, was we it, it was a good uh, that you brought this uh, feeling with you. And it, it gave us opportunity to talk more about this important issue. And, and you know to uh, to expand uh, the whole uh, idea of uh, what the world sometimes is doing by by uh, getting the shortcuts right and which which is an easy easy choice and then you know, raping the literature, simply raping it by uh, a brief description of it. It's a horrible thing to do, you know, to, uh, to, to just get, you know, Seneca letters and, 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 and read one sentence. Uh, and, and, and that's why probably we end up eventually uh, becoming people that are shallow and people that repeat like monkeys everything and people that cannot feel anything and people that cannot have original process of thinking. And we become monkeys, monkeys, monkeys all the time, right? And we, we repeat proverbs, we repeat you know, great sentences that we cannot penetrate. We cannot really penetrate in a way to make sense out of it through the experiences of our own life. And it's just so important to do that, to create a person that is, uh, is, exp is experiencing art through from within and that is why the person can come out and start talking about his own, her experience. And it's like, that's why experience about uh, today, about, uh, about the, the feeling what was happening with one of you and the sparrows from a different perspective that I was talking about was important. 
because uh, that shows right uh, right away the person is receiving and starts really uh, engaging from a different perspective. Tita. We're sending we're sending you to the kitchen yeah. with uh, you have fun. a bunch of virtual <laughs> hugs. <laughs> okay, from yeah. poets, <laughs> from poems. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hi, so everybody. Ed, Ed, how do you describe him? When you say he's difficult to describe, how, do you try? Well, he, oh, for, for sure. I, I mostly uh, been giving examples. I mean, I, uh, I heard him say somewhere that before he bought his first house in California, he went and got a real, a real estate license, uh, which had to take a lot of time and effort. Uh, uh, because he just wanted to, to, to learn more about the business. Um, uh, when when he, he, he got prostate cancer, and, and I've been through that, uh, he, he defied all doctor's orders and did his own thing for six months and brought his PSA level down from a, a pretty high level uh, down, down to just about zero uh, on, on his own. I mean, he's just such a, a unique character, and I find myself giving examples as I've just done to you. Um, but where, uh, did, where did you learn those examples? Where did you learn? I didn't know those th those two things. The um, so so this book tribe tribe of mentors by mm -hmm. by Tim Ferriss is okay. uh, is where I learned I, I think the prostate example um, uh, and about the real estate license. It was during one of the uh, in one of the interviews I I found on YouTube. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Eliane, it's in the beginning of I Got This. He gives a lot of his story. But oh. yeah, the podcasts have been very helpful. And I read The Tribe of Mentors. That's how I got connected with Jersey in the first place and why I bought the book. Because I you know, read the Tim Ferriss book and, it, and I was very interested. And then I listened to a podcast interview with T Tim Ferriss in Jersey and another guy who I don't remember his name. Right, yeah. And then, yeah, I think Dick mentioned this as well. And then I thought... I'll read a sample of the book and I was very taken with it. And, and, you know, I sort of believe that if somebody's name comes up three or four times when you're looking for something like this, that maybe you got to follow through, sure. which I did. But the, as, as everyone has been agreeing, this course that we've been doing goes above and beyond any expectations I ever had joining something like this, like, it's mind blowing. And at the very, I spent the first week, and my husband said, "Are you going to keep going?" And I said, oh, "I don't know if I should." And he says, "Oh, you should because you're totally different now. You're really getting something out of this. Like sometimes you can't see it yourself, but he could observe it. You know, there was changes happening. And I think when I go back, you know, to the first time I joined and see that little, you know, sharing I did, I was a totally different person a month ago." You know, I've grown so much with this group and, and comments and ideas are just phenomenal. Yeah. I'm gonna thank step you, Deborah. Through. Thank you, thank you. And thank you, Ed. I'll be right back myself. I brought two ladies in to the first session and neither one of them wanted to do it. I, I gifted it to them. And I spoke to one yesterday and I tried to explain what we're doing and what it's like now. And I don't think she showed up today. <laughs> I don't know how good it, I, I think it's hard to explain what we're experiencing. You know, um, I tell I tell my friends that it's just a um, a, a huge practice of self respect, mm. um, physical, emotional, psychological, philosophical, you know, in, in, on every level, and it's just basically where that's that's my kind of quick Good. thumbnail. I don't know how else to say. I don't want to say you know it's the happy body. This sounds too bizarre. So I just say, I th we're learning about self respect, and it's through uh, all different kinds of levels. So that's what I feel I, I'm, I'm building and working on and learning about. 
Jersey unzips his soul and puts it out for us. <laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> he does. He unzips. So I had a really interesting experience today. I was uh, taking a walk with my daughter in the woods. And uh, I, I, she doesn't listen to these. She's in the other room watching cartoons. But I swear she's, get, she's getting stuff by osmosis because she goes, we were talking about, she's quite a bossy, she's six years old, but she's quite bossy. And we've been working on, you know, being a good leader, you know, and how to work with people. And uh, she says, yeah, she says, mommy, she says, to be a great leader, you, you need to be good, you know, like actually good, like, like a good person. <laughs> great. And I just, I was like, absolutely. And that's going, that's what wow. we've been learning here, you know, for, for weeks and weeks, you know, it's about being a good person. And like Jersey's obviously an embodiment of, of that, of being a good, a great leader and working on being a good person. So I just thought I would share that because. That's it, lovely. It, it, She's going to lead the world. <laughs> She's six years old. That's so great. Yeah, she, t she takes us for like uh, training classes. She does exercises and makes us do them. And she, uh, she I, I mean, she sees me doing the happy body and so I'm going to do my exercises and I get her to join me for the relaxation sometimes. And, you know, I just let her come in and out, you know, as, as she wants to. But she picks things up and then, you know. So she trains me and her auntie and she's like complete with bringing us bits of water and having rests and going, you know, oh, you're doing great, my lovelies. <laughs> Ellen, did you say that you, um, you did a course with Jersey, was it like in real life? Yeah, in real life, yeah, in, um, in New York last summer. Wow, and how long was that for? It was, it was a weekend. Jersey, the, the course at Omega, was that, uh, that was a three-day course, I think, in last July. So you've been doing it since then? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was doing some of it wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was uh, the exercises and, tr and the diet, that's, that would be more of my sticking point you know, the, the food choices. All right, guys. So uh, I assume that everyone saw the great debaters, right? The movie. So, you know, uh, you see that I jump sometimes and, 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 and I talk, uh, address different movies, different books and so when I address that, then it means really one thing that I, I will probably address it again and so on. So, so if you want to uh, receive and create for yourself, receiving right away, go and read the book or, or watch the movie because uh, I will probably come back to it. It's just you need to trust me that the journey the journey of the poem is moving on and if if it's in the poem there is something there that you don't know that that you can have already a hole <laughs> you can you can take it out and then um, and then uh, I, then it will not work if you take one word out of it it will not work if you take one word from the sparrow it's not going to work that's the whole poem uh, point about poetry. That a poetry is the writing that it can not function if you remove something out of it. So everything is essential to deliver the wholeness. The great debaters. So there is a uh, the last fourteen year old gives the speech, and after that speech the widely called college wins the debate with Harvard, I think 37. All right, so um, 
who heard that to watch the movie and heard that? Go, Simon. Mm -hmm. Simon, watch the movie. Go, I Simon. Watched, I watched the movie. Indeed, I did. Um, and I think what for me was fascinating was the last Harvard speaker was talking from his experience, which was as a privileged white man um, who would probably go into law and therefore law meant everything. Um, and yet the 14 year old boy had experienced the status quo and the injustice of it. And therefore he could see the reason for, uh, the, for civil disobedience. And that, that was the debating topic that was being argued. It was beautifully delivered, right? Oh, it, yeah, it was superbly delivered, and uh, it was also so uh, visceral because he could talk from personal experience. Right, and also the truth was going through, right? A bigger That's truth cool. than actually obeying always the law, right? It was a flaw with the obeying always the law, and that was debated on the by the Harvard students, right? And then he showed how wrong it can be. That's absolutely correct. And it keeps coming back to the same, uh, I, I can't remember who the um, philosopher was that said uh, an unjust law is no law at all. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what uh, uh, his father said, right, in the movie. Yeah. All right, so I have a homework for you guys. Parasite. The movie Parasite. Who saw Parasite? I have. All right. It's so a great film. <laughs> so what do you think? What's the experience? It was a pretty raw experience for me. Um, a fabulous film. I'm trying to think of virtues when I'm thinking back on it, I saw it recently, a couple of months ago, and it, it's just, it was such a bizarre thing watching that film. It was an experience in itself. Okay. Well, it's funny how you said that you were uh, look, looking for virtues, right? So, uh, very interesting. Did you find any? Uh, I haven't found any yet, because I'm just thinking about it. You just mentioned it now, but I, I'm thinking back on it. I really want to watch the film again. It was that. All right, uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so the homework is this. Why that movie shouldn't get Oscar? It got an Oscar. What are you talking about? It shouldn't. It got That's best what picture. It got best picture, I think. That's right, yeah. Yeah. It's the first, it's the first for, um, ever to be a foreign film getting an Oscar. So yeah. You you have to answer why it shouldn't. Because it's too human. It's it's immoral. Those people were immoral. Well, you will you will work on this for days and maybe months. But if you if you answer the, that the right way then I will tell you. Otherwise, I will never tell you. That movie shouldn't be made at all. It's a major flaw in the movie. So if you find it, I will tell you. Do you know where we can see it again? Of course. Is it on, is it on in the internet yet? I think I it's on it. Hulu. I think it's on Hulu now or something. I think, I it, think it might be on Apple TV too. I saw it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's on it. all of the, it, it's been on all of them, Joyce. It's pretty accessible. I've seen it in the theaters, but I don't have Hulu or Apple TV. I only have uh, Netflix and Amazon. So maybe it's time to get something else. <laughs> you know, when, when people ask me to see the movie and I see it's on HBO or nowhere else, I just get the HBO and see the movie. 
I don't even think about that the movie is somewhere or it's not somewhere. It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, it's really funny. Okay. So, so uh, there is a movie, Parasite, and you go and watch the movie. It really doesn't matter where you find it. You find and you watch it. And it's not really something that um, in this today's world that it's not there. It, it really doesn't matter where it's at. You watch the movie. <laughs> Don't let your whiny face list stop you. <laughs> so, Jersey, you're saying there's a, a flaw in the film and it should not have won an Oscar. No, it shouldn't. Yeah, he said it shouldn't have even been made. It shouldn't and have been made. made somebody flaw. was uh, there. If somebody was there thinking, would never make that movie. Okay. Well, that's going to be because the behavior is 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 despicable and and takes advantage and it's it's immoral and it they're just creeps. That's my well, feeling. It's not not good enough. Yeah. You have to arrive <laughs> really to uh, to really say why that movie. Yeah. It teaches the wrong message to people. It teaches people to do, to behave badly for their own gain, to sneak and lie. And I don't know, I, I, I'll be quiet. <laughs> but, we, but you know, the whole thing that we can justify sometimes wrongdoing, right? Mm. So it's like uh, in the, the movie, uh, The Great Debaters, right? that the law justifies justifies the wrongdoing, but it's wrong thing. And that 14 year old delivers the speech, how wrong it is. Even though there is law, right? But the law is wrong. So there is something in this movie that doesn't work. And it made work because of the the society operates today. Interesting. Watch the movie. I will watch the movie too because it's a very interesting thing to uh, to talk about this movie from the perspective of what is going on today, right, in the world. Because if that movie could win Oscar, there's something really wrong with all of us. Jersey just froze. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you hear yeah, what I said? I think his his connections dropped. Do you hear me? Simon had to jump off too. He said the same thing. All right. So do you Jersey, hear me? You're now? frozen. Uh, I hope I'm not speaking over you, but we can't hear you. Oh, you cannot. Could you repeat what you just said? You were frozen. I'm saying that if that movie won Oscar, then there is something wrong with all of us. I agree. Then we need to find out how. Is there certain criteria for winning an Oscar? Do we have to, to know this first? Well, it doesn't matter really, criteria. Just Criteria is only one in life, goodness, right? Okay. There's no criteria really. It's like for poetry, what is in criteria in poetry? Goodness, music, goodness, right? Something else? Meaningful. But goodness, goodness. is a standard. Nothing that, else. But goodness isn't a standard that the world measures itself to. I mean. That's right. Goodness almost works everywhere. Look at the old, the mo almost all movies. Uh, the goodness really is there. Stunt and deliver. Goodness drives the movie. Harriet. Didn't, didn't win an Oscar. Harriet. Didn't win. Drives the movie, right? I don't know if Harriet won an Oscar or not. No, what, what is the, uh, the Oscar movies that previously? 
out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Out of Africa, because it's one of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. Gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good movie, right? It didn't a oh, clockwork where crash. Didn't that movie crash has no got one? Crash? Crash one. Yes, I thought. Yeah. Maybe that should be part of the homework to look at the Oscar winners. Yeah, all of them. Look at all of them. And and let's talk about all of them and see if you saw something, what is kind of a goodness in the movie? What drives the movie? What is the message? Did you see the movie Ford and Ferrari? Yes. What did you yeah, think of that? I wonderful liked it. movie. It was wonderful. A beautiful movie. The drive of this, uh, what was his name? Kelly Miles? What a, I think what, it a, what a beautiful human being. And his wife? and the family, and the goodness, and the, you know, juxtaposition with the, the Ford and horrible people. They showed Ford people, horrible people. Wow. And then they juxtaposed this with a really great, good family. That was a really great message in the, in the movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. I, so there was recently, wasn't there, um, for best picture, um, spotlight and yes. moonlight, moonlight, right. and uh, shape of uh, what shape of the water, shape of I don't know if I have that right. I don't um, know. That was good too. Yeah, and Green Book. Oh, that wow. was great! What, what a movie, right? That was great. Yeah, so those were those were all pretty meaningful. Green Book. Wow, what a movie, right? Yeah. Think about that movie. Think about that movie. Hold that movie in your in your in your mind. Hold this, you know, musician, black, you know, musician, driving through, you know, America. In what was the year? Then, but maybe thirties, right? And and drives in, and you know, can only dine and be in certain places, right? That's why they call Green Book. Cannot. A be and eat with white people, cannot sit where white people sit. Wow. And then gracefulness of this musician, right? This, this, wow. And the, the driver and then the interactions and what drives the, the, the whole uh, movie is this, is this uh, goodness that is in that human being that really goes through it with high integrity. Being poor, right? Sometimes we are poor, but you know, poor doesn't mean that, uh, that we should lose integrity, right? And that is not a virtue, right? In the last scene, when he comes to dinner at the family's house. Right. It was beautiful. He's done there, right? Yeah. And yeah. it was a beautiful movie. Yeah. You know, I'm worried about movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, uh, we will make new movies. Okay, good. We'll make more movies. We like movies. It looks like we like movies, so we'll be making. I love movies. <laughs> you know, I'm from LA. I feel like I'm part of that. I'm not really, but yeah, right. I, lo I love the industry, but we don't well, know what's you know, happening. Movies is another, you know, craft to deliver, you know, the experiences. Yeah, take us closer to feel, to experience, and and, and it's driven also by, you know goodness and humanity and uh, justifying a wrongdoing when the wrongdoing is right. It's, it has integrity. Yeah. Jersey. Jersey. 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you know that? the film? Do you know the film Ashes and Diamonds? Hmm. I heard the title, but don't know. Vada. Hmm. By Vada. Uh, what did you say, Vada? Yeah, it's by Andres Vada, V A J. Vada, Vada. Vada, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I don't uh, remember the movie, but I know um, Pop, 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 you in, in Diamante, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's yours, Z? That's your homework. You have to watch that <laughs> film. I will watch the movie. Yeah, I watched that movie long, long time ago. Oh yeah, well, you know it then. Also, I yeah. Name again? Ashes I mean, it's and a difficult diamond. film because there's good and there's bad and 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 uh, you know ashes and diamonds and there are people that are caught up in difficult circumstances that that choose to do things, you know, set right after World War II in very, very difficult circumstances. I don't want to, you know, talk about it that much because I don't know it that well. But I think that's one of those real life uh, places where people are faced with difficult choices. And they, you know, and the film talks about the uh, that, but also it talks about what do you do when the what do you do when the the dom when the structure of, of society is is hugely stressed, just really stressed. I mean, it's almost broken. Everything is up for grabs. Everything is changed. Nothing is really that certain except goodness. <laughs> well, That's yeah. Easy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the it's really hard for you to comprehend, uh, you know, the situation that we lived in, and uh, you know, it, it, even you know when you uh, when you watch the great debaters and Gandhi, the the Gandhi and nonviolence, you know, the the nonviolence resistance was approached by you know embraced by solidarity. Solidarity simply uh, function on nonviolence resistance, and nonviolence resistance crushed the whole Soviet Union, the, the whole uh, uh, the whole communism that Poland was able to make it happen. Solidarity was that movement. It was the <coughs> Gandhi's, you know, uh, a way of resistance, no violence, and was very powerful. And uh, the boy in the movie talks about that. It opens with Gandhi, right? And, you know, he is this, uh, is that the situation of people that are extremely poor, but with extreme integrity as well. So that, that you know, that people w that when they have high integrity and they are pushed sometimes, they are pushed to the non-violence resistance and that is the, and the usually way how, uh, how the, the law changes. But the, you cannot justify uh, people that are poor and, and compromise. They compromise their, their way of living that the, they lose integrity in the poverty unless it is justified that that you lose integrity because you simply would die so my father was working on the railroad track and and they with the steel factory and we didn't have enough coal to uh, heat the house so he would steal the coal, like other people did, right? But we were pushed to that, that level of poverty that 
could justify the sealing of the coal. So if we could, let's say, uh, buy coal and have it, and he was still at that time, that couldn't be justified. It can only be justified when the man uh, pushed to the live or die, and then it breaks his integrity at that level, but not, not after that. Let me see if I have this poem here. Oh, yeah, I have it. It's actually titled Law. Hmm. Law. Law as in L A W? Right. At the steel factory exit gate, guards search for stolen heat coils in breakfast bags. That night, father didn't come to my cold room. At the steel factory exit gate, Guard search for stolen heat coils in breakfast bags. That night, father didn't come to my cold room. All right, guys, you're getting real poetry. So what's the feeling? Sad. Sad and afraid that something happened right. to your father. That he got caught. But it's hard to receive the poem, right, without. So it's, it yeah. works like a haiku poem, and very short, right? And there is a stealing, there is a search, you know, the poem moves, right, very fast. And there is a, nobody, the, the father doesn't come home, and there's a cold room, and there's our coils. You see all of these words that bring the, they bring the feeling of the, the poem in. The whole situation, what is there? What really happens there? Where are we, right? What kind of existence we are living in? The poem is talking. Coil, cold room, stealing. There's desperation. Desperation, right. 
Yeah, you have a cold room, right? And you have coil. You have a child in a cold And the child, right. And the father. Father's in You're the getting house. this, all of it? Yeah. yeah. In such a short poem, right? Yeah. That's why poetry is so really hard to, you know, to really receive. Because all of it, it's so powerful, so needed, and so fast. At the still factory exit gate, guards search for stolen hit coils in breakfast bags. That night, father didn't come to my cold room. Where are we? Where are we? That people steal coil and put into breakfast bags. Where are we? Yeah? What kind of existence? Where are we in, in, in our planet? Where are we? That father has to still put the coal in the breakfast bag and can be arrested for it. We are there. We are at the bottom of our existence, integrity, and doing something wrong. All right, guys. Somebody wants to say something before we close? I'm afraid that this pandemic has put people in desperate and de de desperate and poor situation. I mean, we're not, but there are probably people that don't have enough. Well, what is enough? Well, heat your room, have a meal, yeah. feel safe. If we cannot heat the room or we don't have potatoes, that would be not enough. But if we have water and potatoes, then we are okay. I, I sent the, the painting in the tribe, face, uh, happy body tribe, picture of the potato painting. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I hope it shows up. Jersey, I just wanted to say thank you today. Um, what an extraordinary class we've had today. And I'm really, really appreciative and moved so much by today. Thank you. Who is saying? It's Sherry. Sherry, let me see. Oh, Sherry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I think we all feel it today. Agreed. Yeah. Well, that's what it's about, right? But you see, um, if I started that two months ago, you would never get it. You're right. And so the, the poem is in the writing. And you are the poem. And the poem is in the writing, in the process of writing. And that poem has the first line, second line, and third line. Cannot start a poem in the middle. Each line is a picture. Right, and each line is, is a lot of uh, movement in the micro-progression system of virtues. Thank you, guys. It was a wonderful class today. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Thank See you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you.